Pretty much the only thing I can remember these days is what the latest smart gadget does or how the latest smart gadget can be used to improve your life and so my brain seems to have no room for anything else. That's where a feature of the Google Assistant comes in and is so useful because I can literally tell it to remember anything I would like and it will store it for me indefinitely. Remember my extra keys are under the mat outside? Once I have that stored in the Google Assistant, I can request it to recall what it knows about that topic, and the Google Assistant will do a search within those memories and display it on screen. What did I tell you about keys? It's great because I can ask on Google Smart Displays and Google Speakers as well and get those out. So it doesn't have to be attached to my phone. But if I've asked it to remember a lock combination or a key placement and then something changes in my life, I can tell the Google Assistant to forget what it knows about that topic. Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and I'm pretty excited to bring you part two out of two parts with the Google Assistant and all of the best tips and tricks. To get the most out of the Google Assistant, you need to have completed your voice match recording and to use the personal results feature. You can find both of those in your assistant settings and as I told you in the previous video, you can always request either the Google Assistant settings or in many cases, settings by name. Of course, with all of this, you'll need a Google account, which means that you'll start storing data and your personal information under that account. Plus, Google stores things like what you said, when you said it, and where you said it. That's a lot of information to leave sitting anywhere. Now, Google will tell you that you have to go all the way to myactivity.google.com on a web browser, or you can go through the Google Assistant app and tap a number of times to try and get through the process of deleting all this information. Instead, ask the Google Assistant to delete everything from today, or this week, or this month, or year, and the Google Assistant will take care of your personal data for you. In fact, set a routine that does this on a daily basis at the end of your day, and you will delete everything from today automatically. Sometimes we have these false wake-ups on our Google Assistant devices, and that's because Google is listening for certain words, and it's probably happened within this video to you. One command that you can give after you've noticed this has happened is to say, that's not for you and it will instantly erase that from the record. Speaking of personal data, it's actually really useful to start giving Google some information about the people in your life. You'll find this under Google Assistant settings and within here you can add the names of what are called household contacts. The funny thing with adding people here is that if you've already given Google Assistant access to your contacts, like most of you have, they're on your phone and the Google Assistant can call or message anyone. So what's the point in adding them here? You can tell Google how you're connected to each person as well as enter their birthday and their address and you can also record how to say their names properly if the Google Assistant is repeating it back to you incorrectly. And you can make them part of your family or your household contacts, which means they show up on smart displays as a quick tap to call. Finally, you can add a nickname, and of course, this is going to work best for your friends that you call things like Sneaky Pete. What happens from this point is that you can ask what Sneaky Pete's birthday is, or what's the fastest route to get to Sneaky Pete's house. Because the Google Assistant instantly associates your voice with your list of people and all of the information that you've given them. This includes nicknames or the relationship you have with them too. And I just spoke about nicknames, and there's a way through Assistant settings to get to a place that has a nickname for you. This can be fun because I've set mine to Big Boy, and so the Google Assistant calls me that whenever I want it to. Now, I can't have that happening when my parents come by, can I? Nope, I should probably get the Google Assistant 
to call me something a little bit different than that or my parents will think I'm very strange or stranger than they already do. So I don't wanna go through all of those Google Assistant settings to get there. Instead, I just request her to change what she calls me. Call me the man. Yes. Some of those other information tidbits that we can give the Google Assistant include things like food preferences that take your requests for a recipe and customizes it for you. Now, I don't find that feature to be perfect, and so it's important to know that you can add modifiers to any recipe that you're asking for. For myself, I'm always having to ask for a gluten-free recipe, so I add that quite often to my search, and Google brings it up correctly. Gluten-free cookie recipe. Of course, if you have a smart display in your home, you can send that recipe to that device and give a quick command to have it show up there. And then you can follow along through the steps and of course see all the ingredients you need. However, once you're on a smart display, you get access to a few more commands with these recipes, including the ability to add everything from a recipe to your shopping list. The other thing you can do is to add a recipe you like to your cookbook. And once you've done that, you can always refer back to that recipe by asking to go to my cookbook. Go to cookbook. All right, your cookbook. On smart displays, I've been able to ask to open my cookbook, but the specific command on your phone to review your recipes is go to cookbook. That shopping list itself is a fantastic feature, and you can use the Google Assistant to add anything to that shopping list. This is a pretty commonly known feature, but what isn't commonly known is that you can add additional notes and lists for the Google Assistant to keep for you. Anytime you tell the Google Assistant to create a list, it will ask you what you'd like to add to that list as well. From that point on, you can add items to the list and of course you can remove items after the fact. Add routine stuff is coming to my better Google Assistant tips list. As you get more lists and as you start to lose track of what you've created lists for, it can make sense to just ask to see your lists and then you can delve into whatever it is you'd like. Just for that shopping list, I'm going to tell you that there's a great option for having it come up automatically when you get to the grocery store, but the whole detail for that is in part one of this series. As you're making food, it's likely that you'll have a need for timers, and this is one of the most used features of smart speakers and phones as well. And if you've given your phone the ability to listen for the wake words, then you could just hands-free get your phone to create a timer. Create a timer for five minutes. That's great, but I often find that I'm creating two or three timers when I'm cooking something, and especially if it's a little more complex because I'm not very good in the kitchen and I need someone to keep me in line. What happens then is I will inevitably forget what it is one of those timers is for and find myself searching for what it is and what I need to do. Instead, you can put modifiers into your timers like creating a timer called chicken. This will put the name of the timer at the top of the smart display or on your phone. And it's useful on both because then it says the name. But on smart displays, timers like pizza or chicken get special graphics and even special sounds coming out when the timer is finished. Here's a specialized list of timers for your smart display. Create a timer for pizza for one minute. Okay, a one minute timer called pizza, starting now. Create a timer for chicken for one minute. Second timer, chicken for one minute. And that's starting now. Your chicken timer is up. Stop. Sometimes I find that I need to add a little time to a timer. And watch out for this one because it doesn't always work perfectly, but you can 
add time to a timer once you've given it a name. This is incredibly helpful when you have to keep checking on something, but you can also use another command that tells Google to reset the timer by name. You can do that before it rings and it will bring the timer back to what you had originally asked for. I just spoke about time quite a bit and we all need timers and of course there's the reminders feature, calendars feature and more based on keeping us organized. But what I find in my own life is that I remember to do something before it's necessary to actually do it. Or I might need to shut something down on my kid if he's spending too much time watching television. Or if I'm getting quite sleepy, then I can kind of set my smart devices to turn off at a certain time. So if I'm getting sleepy, I can tell the Google Assistant to turn off the bedroom Roku in 10 minutes. Or I can use the command at 11 p.m. to schedule it. Turn off bedroom Roku at 11 p.m. It won't work for all of your devices that you have connected to the Google Home application because it's not safe to turn on something like a heater or to rely on a scheduled action. At least that's the official word from Google and I happen to agree with it for things like heaters. Turn off pretend heater in 20 minutes. However, you can get around this in many cases if you know that a device is safe to schedule. If you're using a smart plug or a smart switch to control the device, then either the name or the device type could be stopping you from doing this. What you can do is tap to go into the device and then change the device type. There are certain device types that work with commands like these and certain ones that don't. So make your modifications, but again, make sure it's safe and then test it. Finally, if you're on a smart speaker or a smart display, then a command like play music for 10 minutes works, but I don't find that this works very well when giving a command through your phone. Still, it's very useful for setting a musical timer. Play music for one minute. Playing some music on YouTube music. Gym display will stop playing in one minute. Everyone knows that you can set a timer for getting up in the morning and that's called an alarm. Those alarms on a smart display or a smart speaker can be used to trigger Google Assistant routines. What's really great about this is that you can set different routines per speaker and you can create routines that will only execute after an alarm is dismissed between a certain time period. That means if you're having a nap in the middle of the day, you won't get all of the things occurring that you put into your morning routine. Now, not all of us want to go out and spend money on a smart speaker. We already have a phone and we all know that you can set alarms on your phone. One of the lesser known features on Android devices though is that the Clock app actually contains the ability for you to set a Google Assistant routine that executes after the alarm is dismissed. This becomes a really easy way to set the music you'd like to wake up to and then hear about your day when you're ready to go. It can also do things like set up your smart home for walking downstairs and having your coffee machine turned on and ready to go, but only once you are awake. Which leads me into some of the deeper routines features that we have access to. Whenever you create a routine, in a lot of cases, you will be thinking about the time of day and what you want to do at that specific time. However, what this will leave you with is a lot of routines and probably becoming a little bit confused about which routine does what as your naming structure gets harder and harder to manage. I have some tips in a video link down below for how to name your routines, but one of the features that helps with this so much is called a day-long routine. What's nice about these is you can create different day-long routines for weekdays versus weekends or whatever your weekend happens to be. Then you add a time for the first action to take place and then you input that action. You can add an additional action at the same time or you can even add multiple ones. But then you can also add additional times and what this means is you're grouping all of these things that you would like to have happen automatically in your life into one single routine for that day. 
For me personally, I like to schedule my life a little using this, including getting notifications about the latest news on a specific topic. For this, I can choose to have the Google Assistant read me recent articles and simply put in the topics by tapping on that action again. That gives me a curated list of articles based on topics I'd like at that time. Of course I can get things like today's calendar entries and reminders, but still the most powerful action is the ability to add in your own custom action, which would allow me to use all of those modifiers that we've been talking about today with any command that I'd like to execute. Before I leave this segment on routines, I wanna give you a really impactful feature of routines. I know how hard it is to remember all of your different routines, all the names and how to execute them, which is why if you go into your routine, you can create a little widget by hitting the button up in the top right and this puts an icon on your phone for you to tap and have that routine run. The other feature that a lot of people miss is that you can disable a routine which helps you to organize based on something like a season or a kid's school year. Speaking of kids and the school years, one of the things that I find brings structure into our life is that school and there's a form of day-long routines that you can uh, bring structure into your life with a number of announcements being put out on your displays or your phones at given times and on given days. This is called Family Bell and you can find this by going into the Google Assistant settings and searching for that name. Here you'll find the ability to add a bell set the announcement that you would like to come out and then input both a day and a time for this announcement to come out every week. From there, you can set where that announcement comes out and you can push it to Android phones as well as specific Google speakers and smart displays. Plus, you can choose multiple of them and if you ever need to turn that off because your schedule has changed, then you can simply disable it or delete it. Thank you, automators. Of course, the Google Assistant can do a ton more and Google is always adding new features, which is what we've included in a regular video that we do on the channel here that walks through the newest features and the newest updates for the Google Assistant and the Google Home platform. You can find that playlist up on screen now, or if you haven't already watched part one of this series, it's actually a lot of hidden tips and tricks in that video as well. It's right there. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.